All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the next uh, little first recap of uh, Fishbowl TV and where we've uh, been. I'm here with Julik. Hey, Julik. Hello, hello. Good afternoon. So it's it's been a while again. <laughs> yeah, it's it been goes. it's been a really long while. Well, everybody's been busy. I guess you've been busy. Uh, I've been particularly busy because we were rebuilding. We transfer almost from the ground up, but that's largely complete now. So uh, now we can have this conversation again. So maybe we'll get some uh, shaders from you. I heard you hint. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's very, very much possible. Well, for instance, yesterday I've just finished updating the uh, Logic Matchbook uh, website and I've moved yep. it from uh, Sinatra that it was written in originally to a modern version of uh, Ruby on Rails, which was uh, an operation that took me two days suddenly yep. instead of like three hours that I anticipated, but it worked. So, uh, <laughs> But from there on, I hope I can finally make some things happen, like make it so that people can delete the shaders they have uploaded by accident and stuff like that, which has been yeah. a long time feature request. And also we have a, this idea that people should be able to also share things like action setups, which was also a, a request from a, from a long time ago. And hopefully somewhere end of this year, we can finally yeah. deliver. That's a, that's a cool idea. That's essential. <laughs> Actually, really, re really, really ashamed that I didn't get to it, uh, didn't get to it sooner. But yeah, I, I also have a day job. <laughs> and uh, what you've been doing? Well, yeah, at the start of the year, I guess um, I just went freelance. I've been freelance for the last, uh, the last bit, and it's, um, it's been pretty crazy, you know, um, all over, back and forth between New York. I've done a couple of the user groups too, which has been fun in Toronto and in New York, and. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been wild, but uh, you know, got to do these every once in a while. And you know, these are interesting because um, this is actually going to be the first of um, some of these that we're going to do that aren't in the traditional just on building shaders. So this one's we're going to actually have a guest that you uh, you happen to run into in Berlin, I believe. Yeah, I happen to run into Ivar in Berlin in February this year. This is how long this uh, this episode has been in in the making. <laughs> uh, he just uh, came back from that same uh, uh, visit you were on when uh, the uh, when the Autodesk team invited people to Montreal to to talk with the developers and stuff, and when where all the the advertising campaign was was made. Yep, yep. The uh, the photo shoot funny thing that was fun <laughs> yeah and he he showed me uh he showed me some really nice stuff that he uh also demos on the uh on the flame user groups uh some of his setups and how he combines actually his own his own shaders uh to uh, to achieve some nice effects etc and i thought this might be very interesting besides the fact that ivar is actually single-handedly responsible for over 90 percent of the shaders people use at all <laughs> And he's completely unstoppable, and he's continuing to make them, which is uh, absolutely amazing. He really, he really uh, made some great, great stuff. By now, I, I, I think everybody uses them, right? I'd, I'd, I'd be shocked if, if it's not involved in someone's setup, one way or another. It's, uh, it's such an amazing resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, and, and he's, 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 he's a really, really wonderful, uh, really wonderful guy, really humble. And uh, what he, what he had to show, he had some keying tricks to show and he also showed some uh, uh, I believe some spill tricks that he uses etc so I think it's going to be really uh, it's going to be really nice to see them for uh, for everybody and the only thing I must say is uh, excuse the echoes because the place where we recorded is actually a very very large open floor sort of factory like trendy office setting yeah. uh, where they also produce Copra uh, their interesting uh, dailies review solution, the online yep. dailies review thing that he's making. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why the sound is kind of echoey. But uh, I hope you will enjoy it nevertheless. And also I hope that we'll be able to show you some more interesting stuff in the near future. Yeah, I, like I said, uh, I wish I was there at the time. But um, yeah, this will be the first of a lot of new ones. And um we hope you guys enjoy the next uh, little bit coming up in just a sec. Yes. So have fun and till next time. One, two, one, two, three. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is this is silly. <laughs> this is really silly. Okay. Hello, uh, everybody. So this is Yulik, and I am 
in Berlin at the moment. Somehow that happened. <laughs> and I'm sitting here with Ivar and... Jasper. You have to get closer to the mic because... Now I'm closer to the mic and I'm Jasper. Yeah, Berlin Massive. Yeah, Berlin Massive, and, and we are at the at the Cinepost, the nice post-production company uh, Ivar works at, and we thought we could do a very small uh, sort of a demo session on how to use some Ivar, some of Ivar's stuff, which is on the Logic Matchbook directory. And now I give the mic to Ivar. Ivar, please tell people what you are doing. Oh. Hello everyone, here's Eva, and um, uh, actually the setup I will try to present today I showed at the user group meeting in Berlin happening one and a half months ago, um, but it was a team of maybe 10 to 15 persons, so I hope uh, you will enjoy it and I will go through some of my setups which are based on on some of the work some other people did, like Joel in Toronto for the additive key and uh, poor man's pixel spread, I think, was built from... Everybody who, every, everybody who does his own gizmos or groups or shaders yes. has to make a pixel spread once, right? Yeah, I think so. I think I have to, to uh, overdub that <laughs> later That's on. That's okay. Um, and the other stuff I try, uh, I will present um, are volumetric light box shader. Maybe uh, some of you are not that familiar with what's possible with a volumetric uh, light box shader. Um, the stuff which was presented most of the time are the color grading stuff, um, the relighting stuff, and stuff like that. And yeah, I will try to, to show you some different um, use cases for that. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds awesome. So, what is the what is the archive which is there at the moment? That's from the user group meeting, right? That's from the user group meeting. You're right. Okay, and so to play with that stuff, do do you actually need to have that archive, or can you just go for the most part on the shaders alone? You can go for the most uh, part of shaders alone because um, I think only one of the shaders is using actually uh, source footage for it, and that's. It's, Typically the first one for the additive key because I think it's it's easier to explain how an additive key is working if you have something like something edged, to key something to key yeah and um, the coolest thing would be to have something like hair details because then it's um, uh, easier to present but and, and oh sorry the auto clean plate is using something um, as a source footage as well. Because we have to, to get rid of some of automobiles, I think, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. So, and the rest of the stuff uh, and all the lightbox stuff is, is uh, building with an action, it's built with an action setup and one lightbox. All right. Attached to it. That sounds awesome. I want to see it. Okay. So, Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think this setup started uh, with, uh, with a batch setup uh, I got from Louis in Toronto. And um, I think one of the other people who supported me on that was um, Greg Paul, who shared his favorite uh, additive key setup as well. So I tried to put that into a matchbox shader so it would be easier to adapt or to adjust or even to handle in a batch setup because, um, yeah, it's just a single node instead of um, all the all nodes you see the here. So um, what I did is uh, just a simple dispel on a on a on a foreground talent. Uh, That's just a, just an automatic dis dispel like you do with a master tier. Yes, okay. I think that's yeah, uh, that's no. a typical stuff. I can reset it. Um, oh. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I put my key color, and that's it. You get your D spill mm -hmm. foreground, and I only pipe, pipe out the foreground um, yeah, with the D spill front to C, and um, I got my my mat as well. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing I, I'm I'm really uh, I don't adjust the key that much because it's just about the additive keys type on on the hair 
This time I don't want to, to show you how to fill in uh, the garbage mat for the rest of the talent. Mm -hmm. So um, that's already the additive key. Uh, it needs the um, suppressed foregrounds um, talent, um, the original background, which in this case is a simple matchbox shader. And what is the what, what is the matchbox shader that you're using here? So it's a croc additive key. No, the <coughs> no, for the for the dots. For the dots, it's um, I think it's called bubbles. Mm -hmm. so it's just oh, it's a, the it's the croc bubbles. I see. Yeah, it's yeah. a croc bubbles one. Um, so just uh, f uh, I think it's it's working um, nice for this purpose. Um, and then you have the front, the back, your normal mat uh, coming from the master here, and a holdout mat if you have something, and a plain, clean background. So if mm -hmm. your talent is shot uh, uh, with a locked off camera, um, you can pipe in the clean background. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you can use a built-in pixel spread um, to create your clean background, I can show you so, that here. So, do you actually? So, so, you actually have a pixel spread implementation inside the yeah. matchbox shader? Yeah, that's that's right. Where did you pick that? Um, this this one is built actually on a, on a simple batch setup I got from Edward. Who is called Edward? Edward. Edward. One of the old school flame guys who showed that on a fix guide. Sam Edwards? Edwards? Sam Edwards. Yeah, yeah Sam, Sam Edwards showed me that. Um, it's, it's, it's really a, a simple batch setup. I can share that with the community if you want, and I think I did it already on Logic. So as you can see here, it's, it's uh, blurring, and I think it does a, a divide on the blurred mm -hmm. foreground. And so you can adjust easily and, and get a clean, yeah. clean uh, background. And this pi pixel spread is just actually your usual uh, float divide trick, right? So you basically you you, you basically pre the uh, you you pre your um, plate with your mat, and then you blur it, and then you divide it back, right? Yeah, I think that's yeah. a that's a trick. Okay, cool. um, so yeah, it's a real old school trick, but I didn't know at that time. But it was really easy to implement as a as a matchbox part. Mm -hmm. um, so I included it in, in um, uh, if you run into problems when you not have a clean background plate available for that shot. And it mm -hmm. works really, really well. Um, I think Greg Paul in his batch setup was usually using um, the, the uh, Autodesk pixel spread, but I didn't have the source code for that. So I went <laughs> with, a, I went with a, um, poor man's pixel spread by Sam Edwards. OK. Um, so what you get as a result is something like this mm -hmm. um, compared to your original foreground element. Mm -hmm. um, I think I sh should do it. Oh, OK, it has already context, so I can uh, do uh, before and after. So that's the original one without the additive key mm -hmm. it's really really ugly edges and um, yeah, if hard. i switch if i switch to the same mat with the same foreground and do an additive key with with a shader mm -hmm. you get something like that so you can compare it so you get back your original hair detail mm -hmm. without fine-tuning your actual key okay and actually you all, all all you need to do for this is you just use the croc additive key as a conf node basically yeah that's a totally default config damn uh, that's good yeah you um what you can do is you can uh, um, adjust some of the values so if you if you think the additive key is way too too much you can dial down or dialed up and uh, you can even do uh, not some additive keying, maybe more some uh, subtractive to to get some darker edge on your uh, on your talent. If you comping it back on onto a darker background instead of a lighter one, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's the stuff you can adjust inside the shader. So uh, I added a little bit of of a denoise to the shader. I don't know if you will see it in the uh, in a screencast, but if you enable it. 
it will soften it will soften your incoming mat okay. and sometimes it will get rid of the noise uh, attached to your key mm -hmm. so instead of denoising the the foreground up uh, foreground talent up front <coughs> okay so i think oh okay what, what i um added to the setup as well is uh, some little trick um, I think most of you uh, know about doing some foreground color correction based on an IBL fed into an action node. So you relight your foreground um, talent with, with an IBL. Mm -hmm. um, what I did, if you don't want to use it inside action, is um, using the background, blur it heavily. Um, so, yeah, so like this. And correct color corrected a little bit and if you soft light that over your talent with with the um with the matte output you will get something like a color correct on top of your foreground so if you compare that to the incoming sorry about that incoming to the result you see you get a color correction based mm -hmm. on your on your background without doing any color correction at all so okay. that, that helps to, and that's to, basically just a soft light it's soft a light blend it's a soft light blend of a blurred background mm -hmm. so that's an easy way to 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 get it uh, blend in better to the, to your background without any doing without mm -hmm. doing any color correction at all yeah that's cool and that is and, and that is already available on logic right so if you download the logic stuff you also get the additive key matchbox yes yes that's awesome that's a cool one um, <coughs> uh, the last thing I did, there is already a light wrap available, which, which will add a little bit more of, of edge details to the talent, so you, it blends uh, in with the, with the highlight parts of the background, so you get your glowing, um, uh, yeah, or bleeding into the foreground. Mm -hmm. um, and that's already available on Logic matchbook.org as well and it used different blend modes um, most of the time I think you will stick to it <clears throat> the, the cool thing is which maybe not everyone is aware of that you are not only able to blend it in as an, in a, as an additive one you can go negative and then you will darken the edges here mm. so um, Another another possibility to to blend in your talent on a on a dark background instead of a lighter one, which was shot on. Yeah, that's a cool, that's a cool trick. Yep. And all of that we do without actually without action and without the comp nodes, right? Yeah, it's it's purely oh, based awesome. on on matchbox shader, simple color corrections, and of course a master key to get your um, these built foreground yeah, in the first place. Yeah, and a mat to start with. All right, awesome. Well, what else you got in the little bag of tricks? I think we should have started with a poor man's pixel spread because then <laughs> um, we, uh, we would see how it was built. So this is the actual um, batch setup I got from Sam Edwards, so uh, it's using the master key of, uh, oh, sorry, for, for uh, getting rid of the green spill. Um, it, it's, we are using it for getting the mat. Let me put it into to a view. Uh, we need the mat from mm -hmm. talent, uh, which we get inverted, then multiply the inverted mat on a despilled foreground. Um, blur that with the inverted mat and then divide it back and yeah. that's the way you get your your clean background and um, the only thing you have to adjust um, I switch to that um, the context the only thing you have to adjust to make it larger or smaller is yeah. the blur node in that way and that batch setup uh, I merged into some of the parts of the additive Kia uh, matchbox shader. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. the thing you can do easily. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Also for 
this might be actually handy to know for people who use Nuke in addition to Flame. This is approximately what the IBK background color does to your footage. Because in IBK background you choose your uh, key color and then it makes you, it, internally it creates a kind of a very rough key for that and then it uses this kind of divide and fill technique to present you with a background that you can use with the uh, that you can use with a uh, uh, IBK keyer. Okay. Nuke. Okay. Good to know. Um, what do we are doing next? Uh, then we go to stuff that looks nice. I already see interesting yeah, things we, in there. Um, I think we could go to the Boca lights. Um, uh, they are most famous maybe in advertising, not that much maybe on the feature film market. Um, I would try to get back my little proxy icons. So um, at the time, I, I showed that to the to the uh, Berlin user group. There wasn't a Croc uh, 2D particle shader available. It's it's just a simple dot like creating a shader. Um, and if I switch back to the default. It's just creating bubbles with a soft edge. Oh, okay. But if you adjust them um, and turn down the color variation to zero, you get black and white bubbles, and you can tune the noise amount to get some variation in the bokeh. Mm -hmm. um, so I add some, add some gain here, and now um, I add my. Croc bouquet, I think, which is available since one year. Hmm. So you get some simple um, bucker lights, which you can add on top of your on top of your scene. Maybe you can add a, a chroma warp to it, so they look a little bit more realistic. Wow. Um, the same goes for. Miles S. Miller's um, shader, which he calls a lens blown node, mm -hmm. which does all of the uh, of the shaders above in, in one go. So you get your nice lens blur uh, inside it. And the coolest thing I think he added to his shader is that you can. Um, uh, um, adjust the kernel. So mm -hmm. here you are only seeing the kernel, you can change the sides. And um, I think the real cool thing is that you can change the noise as well. So you can change the noise as well. So if you don't want to see any, any mm -hmm. kernel noise, you can uh, go this way and they will look the same or comparable to, to the one I showed earlier. But I think most of the time you want to have some noise in your bokeh and then they look like this. That's cool. So, um, And in your experience, those bokeh Magicbox shaders, they are faster than the defocus mode of the blur node or about the same or slower? Um, I think they are faster. The, 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 the focus blur node has one advantage that you can load in kernels to, to define the kernel, uh, to the bokeh shape mm -hmm. uh, or the kernel shape. And that's not possible yet uh, inside the matchbox shaders. But if you want to go for a circle like uh, the focus, I think we are uh, faster and easier to set up. Um, okay. So <clears throat> So, but that's not the end. And then I thought it would be cool to have um, bokeh shapes directly inside action. So I created, uh, where's your? It's, re it's mapped to the, it's like all the American, yeah. This okay. Um, it would be even more cool to, to get um, some simple shapes inside action, which are really volumetric. So if you, uh, grab your camera, you can really fly around it and it's behaving 
uh, correctly um, inside 3D space. So if I go back, I can color correct them. And if I add a depth of field blur to it, you you can get some some really nice wow. um, bokeh shapes, which are actually uh, corresponding to your um, to action scene, to your depth and to your action scene. So if you need so if you need to make some kind of a dream dream scene with a person flying through kind of a bokeh blurred volumetric thingies, then you can use that with a tracked camera or otherwise. Yes, yeah. wow. that would be possible. So, so you see, this the, 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 this this stuff is insane. So I, uh, Ivar knows that like I manage the the site where all of these shaders are actually stored. Yep. But I need to have the author show me what you can actually do with them because I didn't explore them all that much. Yeah, I think there's. Uh, it, there is some some gap um, for for uh, which is happening in um, for the for the light box stuff. Um, I think everyone is using uh, is used to see them as a color correcting um, or uh, lighting addition inside action, but you can get really nice volumetric stuff out of it. Um, Maybe some of you knows about um, uh, a shader I did, which um, creates something like fl uh, flames. I hope I can find it easily right now. Um, damn. I don't think I have the logic shaders. Okay. Should we install them? Yeah, should. <coughs> So, so okay. Let me let me let me take a look um, where the flame one is located. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Here it is. Um, one tip: the the light box shader uh, uh, marked with a little light bulb, so you you can find them easily inside your matchbox director because right now they are not. Uh, split into different parts like Matchbox and Lightbox. They are still in one directory, but you can um, find them uh, in terms you are lost. So yeah, yeah. Look for Lightbulb if you you if you are looking for Lightbox shader. I promise I'm going <coughs> to work on that. <laughs> okay. So okay, I don't see anything. Why? Maybe it's uh, the, the, the VRAM is full or something. Is this an intensive shader? Oh, yeah, the, it is. Um, but maybe we have to reset. Oh, OK. We have to reset uh, the camera. Oh. So um, this wow. is this is a shader which was ar uh, already available as a Matchbox shader. But the cool thing is we are in still in action right now. And you can orbit around your flames. So wow. they are fully volumetric. Damn. And and if you if you go up with those um, sample steps, you can get really realistic flames. And the cool thing is, you can animate them, you can slow them down, you can stop them, and you can uh, orbit around, and you get realistic flames inside action, which look really realistic, I think. Um, and just for just for my understanding, to make this work, actually, what you need is so you need a light, you need, you a, need light. a light box shader, and you need a sphere, right? Yeah, you need a sphere because um, that's really important. Uh, I don't, uh, I forgot about to mention that because you, every volumetric light box shader has to be projected onto something. You don't need a sphere, but mm -hmm. if you want to to fly around, you. I think it's the best way is to to use a large sphere which is surrounding your your action scene to to not uh, move outwards of the scene. So you always see your volumetric light box stuff happening. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you you will you will um, sometime meet the boundaries and then you are outside. I don't know if you can. Um, 
and sometimes yeah, you will some outside you, just... you will leave the sphere but you see um if i move with my camera it's yeah it's fully 3d so mm -hmm. and you can orbit around and you have some nice uh, nice flame ball or something like that so yeah that's that's how lightbox could work for you uh, i think some of you might uh, not know that yet so please take a look it, it looks really really stunning and on a, a z840 a z120 the, this scene is fully um, real time so you can play it back in 1080p without any problem and would look good yeah just for just for the record we are recording this on a 2011 macbook pro so Please bear with us while we wait for the GPU to yeah. uh, catch up. <laughs> okay, there is some other light, light box stuff I did, um, which I would like to show you. Um, this one is, uh, I'm trying to simulate something like snow. And some of you, uh, might know, I think Ton Bracken used it uh, on some of his shots. Um, I think it's one of the, the, the most viewed shader on Vimeo. I was really surprised. It's a simple 2D uh, snow shader where you can adjust uh, some of the stuff. But uh, I um, thought it would be way, way more interesting to get something like uh, this, which is working in, in side action as well. So you you get something like particles in different um, sizes, uh, mm. which will work like 3D snow. And if you color correct and slow it down, it will look like this. Mm. It's a little bit snow. Uh, maybe you should cache it. You're actually one of the one of the few people who use batch caching, right? Yeah, it, it's working really nice for for stuff like that. Um, uh, I hope so. So no, it is, yeah. It yeah. is. So I think you you see the point. So yeah. Um, so if you have a 3D scene inside action or a 3D camera track, you can actually uh, Fly have through the snow. It can fly through snow without using a particle system. And as I mentioned before, this is all happening real time on, on, a, on a default um, Autodesk certified machine. Um, <laughs> Which this MacBook Pro, by the way, totally <laughs> isn't. But isn't, but yeah, it still uh, show the effect. It's working, yeah. Um, yeah, you can can misuse the, the snow shader for, for something like amber lights. So um, the same thing happens here. It's, it's just going upside down. Um, uh, cache it again. And now we get sparks. Yeah, or well, sparks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let me rewind it. This would work nice inside of a inside of a volcano type of shot. Yes, some um, kind of a lava floating, yeah. melting, and kind of thing. Just to show you that I'm not faking here. Um, I'm still able to orbit around. Hmm. Um, yeah. So, what I still have left? Um, Pum and light leaks. I still can't remember what I did here, but uh, let me see. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Ta -ding. Um, okay, I think this was a combination of multiple matchbox shader just to show you uh, how to how you can recreate the typical light leak stuff, um, which is so much maybe overused in commercials. Um, but yeah, it's still nice to look at. Um, uh, I used my bubbles again to get some 
to get some um, noisy circuits moving around. Um, I added a crazy noise one. Don't ask me what it's doing, but uh, <laughs> it's create some some noise of some input patterns. If you logic up that together, you get something like this. You're not that big on the comp node. No, I'm not that big <laughs> on the comp node. Uh, I think at that time when I built that, that there wasn't still uh, there wasn't that front back mat available yeah. uh, in yeah, the yeah, comp yeah, node, yeah, so yeah. everyone was going back to logic up. Um, and if you blur that heavily uh, in, in a vertical direction, you get something similar already to, to uh, typical light leaks. Mm -hmm. And even on that machine, it's nearly uh, real time. And then I comp that on top of some, some noise, which looks like water, stuff like that, to get some, some noisy stuff inside that light leak. Um, and the last one is a simple chroma warp um, to get some mm -hmm. yeah, distortion and uh, chromatic aberration, which which will look fine if you comp it on top of your normal footage. Nice, but ideally, instead of the bubbles, you would be using you would be using your footage, right? Yeah. And yeah. You would yeah. apply a very fast, very fast blur too. Yeah, and yeah. Just, um, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, but the the thing here was to to show what's what's possible without using any any source footage. Mm -hmm. um, so you get something which you can comp of it. I'm just curious how would you how how, how you would use it with um, with a real footage type of situation. But it's really cool that you can also use it as a standalone just by actually I think those bubbles are way nicer than the built-in dots shaders and stuff like that. They're cool. Um, don't know if I still have... Oh, okay. I have, I have the simple rain left. Um, I think someone on, on Logic asked me how t you can do rain without a source footage or a short footage. And I thought that the, the simple um, snow shader um, um, would be able to supply you with um, some nice, well, it doesn't do it, with some nice um, rain stuff as well. Uh, I think. Um, Why it, is it black? Is it, is it too much? I uh, think it it's, it's, it isn't. Out the VRAM? No, I don't think it's black. I think if you're going up in exposure. Ah, okay. So it's, it's, it's really dark. So, so it's not boosted, really. It's not boosted really. I, I don't know why I went that way, but maybe it makes sense if you step through the notes. Um, maybe you should put a color corrector in oh, between think, there to boost it a bit. I think I will boost the uh, oh, well, oh, exposure. Yeah. So um, here you hopefully can see some grainy noise. Um, this gets transformed um, in a vertical direction to get the streaks of the of mm -hmm. the rain. And uh, lastly, I think I did a color correction, and now we can reset the exposure ah, okay. to so get so some really, sure. really nice um, rain-like structure. Lovely, Lovely. So. and you could you but potentially you could also apply this with um, with a with a three D snow like you showed us. Previously. Yeah, that this one is is it's really simple. It's using the um, uh, 3D, uh, the simple 2D smoke. Um, if I put uh, match, uh, no, a matchbox shader. Control Z, man. Yeah. Can't correct to it. And adjust it here. So this, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to see. It's really like crazy moving dots, mm -hmm. uh, which I use to create the rain to get mm -hmm. really uh, some randomness to it. And what do you apply with the crop distort thingy? You do um, the... This, I, I think I should put the color correction on it as well. Um, this will displace the, the tiny little dots 
Uh-huh. Uh, it's really hard to see. Sorry for sorry about that. Um but maybe if we switch to the context view of the result mm -hmm. and bypass it, you will see that it's distorting the, the raindrops in a more realistic way. So if I play it back, it looks like this. If I disable it, you have simple white dots. Okay, cool. And for and for this distort shader, what is the what is the most important parameter that you have to tweak? Because I see you got a few in there. I think it's an amount slider, uh, so okay. and you should put it really slow. Um, but you can play around it to get different type of rain rainy effects. But um, I think the easiest way you can get is a typical um, what was it called? Uh, uh, Shit, I can't remember. Um, so it's more like a comical style of, of, of rain where you get lark streaks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's all I can show you for now. Well, that's, that, that's really cool because now I see how you can combine those shaders to build something almost from scratch. And I would actually really really suggest everybody to to try those shaders together in in this kind of combination and also never forget that when we do stuff on flame one of the most important things is uh, always trying stuff that the system wasn't necessarily designed for so yeah. you just grab all the tools that you that you get from people or that you get from built in with the software and you just bend and twist their outputs to to make something happen. Uh, for instance, I remember that I had to do snow in action once and I had a perfect camera track and it was a very long shot for a film and it was really difficult to art direct and do anything uh, with. And I can imagine that with systems like this, like with this lightbox shader, I would be able to tweak it much quicker and, yeah. just, and, and, and maybe arrive at a solution without reverting to a Houdini setup that we had to go to. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that that was the idea behind building those those shaders to help you out on simpler situation. You you can't solve any situation with that or any any problem which got thrown uh, at you. But I think for 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 some fast prototyping stuff, it's working really well and it's working most of the time in real time. That's a cool thing. Yeah. So you don't have to render. You just Press mm -hmm. play and see it happening in real time in front of you. And what's your favorite croc shader? Oh, the light wrap, maybe. Okay. The light wrap. I think it's a light wrap, yeah. Because you use it all the time. Um, I, the cool thing, I don't have to use it because I don't do any green screen work. But if I had to do it, I would love to have it. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's really cool. Hey, uh, thank you very much for the show, and I hope. We'll, Thanks for uh, having me. I, I hope we'll be able to speak to you some more later once Joel can join us in because Joel couldn't attend today. He was at work apparently. Yeah. This meeting was arranged at a very short notice because I just happened to be. Yeah, in I really Berlin. miss him. So. Yeah. But you, but you seen him? You seen him in Montreal, right? Yeah, I saw him in Montreal. He's a crazy guy. Uh, come on, he's. <laughs> He is a lovely, crazy guy with a lot of cats. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't want, you, don't, you, you, you don't you don't want to say that you're perfectly normal and I am perfectly normal, right? We we both are perfectly normal. I was told that um, he is a I'm crazy. Uh, uh, you too. Uh, I was told that he is the craziest uh, that um, uh, at that time. I couldn't believe it, but yeah, I have to admit he is right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's definitely. Okay, we never crazy. allow you on the show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> never ever. <laughs> So uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I hope you had a nice time and I hope I could show you something which is useful for your daily work. And, and if you throw some cats. Yeah, and if you have some question or you want to, to have those uh, setups, uh, just contact me. Yeah, and you can find Ivar's email, I think, in all of his shaders that yes. you can download from logicmagicbook.org and I hope we're going to have Ivar to uh, speak more to him about his history with the flame and how it all started, etc. But I would rather do it once Joel is in. Yeah, that would be cool. And uh, um, stay tuned. Uh, in 2017, there's a lot uh, new stuff coming up. So Shh, There uh, is no 2017. Oh, there is no? You never speak about 2017. Oh, okay. The first rule of 2007... No, wait. I'll do that again. <laughs> <laughs> You, you heard nothing, folks.
There okay, will there will be back. there will be awesome stuff. There will be awesome stuff. That's all. That's all. Till next time. See ya. <laughs> bye bye.